So, if uh, the numbers on the screen behind me are correct, I should be live right about now, and I hope that happens down here too. Um, what you're viewing today is a live build. Uh, this is the $1,000 system that I parted out at the beginning of this month. I do a build every single month. I don't always build them live, but uh, hey, it's December, and it's cold and rainy outside, so I figured what better time than now to build a computer uh, live for you guys. So. Excellent. I see that I'm live down there. That's good. Thanks to all you guys who are joining me in chat. I'm going to try to keep an eye on that a little bit, but uh, I'm going to also try to make this uh, sort of a walkthrough, a tutorial type thing, if you will. Um, I'm working with a few parts that I've never worked with before, so you never know. Things might not go all right. Um, and also the top of my head's being cut off. Sorry about that, but you know, got to keep everything in frame. So um, let's get right to it. Uh, again, this is the system that I parted out at the beginning of this month in my monthly builds videos. Every month I do usually a couple builds. Uh, this month I just did one. This is about a thousand dollar system overall. I'm using most of the core components that I parted out in that build uh, parts list, but I did swap out a few things here and there, mostly parts that won't really affect the overall speed and performance of this system. So um, let's run down the parts first of all. Most computers have seven core components, uh, starting with the case. Then you have the CPU, also a CPU and heatsink fan if the CPU doesn't come with one. Then there's storage, uh, my SSD and my hard drive down there. Uh, that's three. Fourth is memory, that's right down here. Fifth is a motherboard, which is up here. Sixth is a graphics card, which is down there. Graphics card can be optional, but if you're building a gaming PC, you probably have a graphics card. And lastly, you will need a power supply. All right, so yeah, it um, looks like everything is working. Oh, my audio might be out of sync. Well, honestly, there's not much I can do about that at this point. There shouldn't be, that shouldn't be out of sync. Oh well. Anyway, um, so let's go ahead and talk about each part individually. I'm going to set these aside so, uh, you know, I know what's going on. And also I do have a uh, top-down camera that I can show you guys um, so you can get a better look at what I'm doing as I go through with this build. Alright. I'm kind of watching comments. Uh, yeah, so let's start out with this, this case right here. Uh, this is a new product. It's from Deepcool. I don't know how new it is. I don't know when it came out, but it's about a $50 case and spec wise it had everything that I wanted like painted interior, lots of room. It's full size ATX so it's going to give you lots of expandability in the future. Um, full size ATX is going to give you the most compatibility with computer parts that are out there because it's a very standard size. Um, and yeah, other than that, I just wanted something solid that wasn't too terribly expensive. CPU's right here. It's the Core i5 6600K. Uh, since this is an unlocked processor from Intel, it doesn't come with a heatsink fan. So for that, I'm going to use the Enermax uh, ETS T40. Um, in the actual parts list, I used a different uh, CPU cooler because the ETS T40 is harder to find now. Enermax has made a slightly smaller version of this, but it looks very similar. And uh, performance is right in the same ballpark as well. For storage, I have an SSD and a hard drive. I think this is a very good storage configuration, uh, especially if you're just starting out. An SSD is great for your operating system and uh, programs that you want to be able to load up very quickly. Um, so I definitely recommend getting an SSD. If you're not going to get a hard drive, just get an SSD. You can get by with it. However, 240 gig is kind of the, um, I'd say, reasonably priced option that you can get right now. Maybe 60 to 80 bucks is how much you'd pay for a decent 240, 256 gig SSD. Uh, and that's a great starting off point, but not quite enough for all of your games and everything if you're gaming. So I'm also going to be adding a two terabyte hard drive. Those will go hand in hand. Memory. Um, memory doesn't really matter all that much when it comes to like what brand you get or even the speed. Speed is not a huge impact on overall performance. So I have DDR4 memory because I need DDR4 memory to be compatible with the motherboard and the power or motherboard and CPU I'm using. And I have a two by eight gig kit, which is the same uh, capacity and two by two or two stick kits like I had in the um, parts list. Um, this is just a different brand from Corsair. Pricing shouldn't be too much different. Uh, power supply is right here and this one uh, was just one that I had because the one that I recommended I do have but it's in a different system I realize. So this is an EVGA 750G2, a 750 watt uh, fully modular power supply. Although really um, all you need in order to get by with a build like this is 
somewhere in the 550 to 650 watt range for power supply. Then I recommend getting an 80 plus rated one if possible, uh, gold if you can, if not at least bronze. And then um, having modular cables is nice. And then having all black cables um, will make things look pretty if you're worried about how things look. Here is the graphics card. This just arrived today. That's the reason I'm doing this today live is because uh, this arrived. Actually, the graphics card and the motherboard. I was worried would not show up because they might have showed up later tonight when I have other things that I need to be doing. Uh, so thankfully, this did arrive. Also, Hero is over there locked out, and he's kind of whimpering, so I'm sorry. He's, he's very upset that he can't be over here with me. Hero, you stay there. You stay. Okay, he's a good boy. He went to the vet this morning. Anyway, uh, this is the Sapphire Nitro Radeon R9 Fury graphics card, and this is sort of my answer to... Um, not having a very good graphics card options above $250. This one will be a little bit faster than what you can get for $250, such as an RX 480 or a GTX 1060 6 gig. Um, it is slightly older, but it does use HBM memory, which is cool. It's a very fast card and it's overclocked. And um, during the Black Friday time period, you were getting, you were able to get these for $270, $280. Here, oh, shh, shh. I put, I put him over there so he wouldn't be making noise right here next to everyone, especially if the dogs start barking or something. All right, finally, motherboard Z170E uh, from Asus. This is just a very solid, uh, you know, not like super budget, but in the more budget range motherboard from Asus. Z170, so it does uh, allow overclocking, which will go along with the processor. And then it also has kind of the basic levels of features that I wanted, such as it does have two-way support for SLI or Crossfire. Uh, it has an M.2 slot on there if you wanted to drop in a fast SSD in the future or something like that. And it's Asus. They're a solid brand. Um, they make solid boards. And that is that. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, or the first thing I normally do when I'm making a build is do an outside-of-the-box build. For the sake of uh, expediency, I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to be trusting that uh, this motherboard will work. But that is definitely one of the first things I recommend people do with a new build is basically to get the motherboard set up uh, outside the case with the processor and the memory installed in it. Uh, and then you can hook up the power supply and power it on and make sure at least that you can get through the boot cycle um, in order to make sure things are functional before you go to the trouble of installing everything in the case. Again, if you do want to check out how to do that, my original how to build a computer video kind of guides you through it. But I'm going to skip that for today. Hello everyone in chat. Hello, hello Silver Shaman. What's going on? Uh, yeah, thanks for being here, you guys. I hope I hope chat is nice, because because I really don't have much bandwidth to uh, do anything about it if it's not. All right, from the motherboard, I have gotten the I/O shield, which is a very critical piece that you install into the case, and a couple SATA cables, because I do have uh, two drives to connect. Each one will require a single SATA cable. One for the SSD and one for the uh, hard drive. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and set up the motherboard so that I can uh, move on to, to installing everything else in the case. I have a rubber mat here, the similar kind. Like, I mean, it's just a big uh, a mouse mat. Let's see if we can show you guys that. That's the wrong button. Oh, wait. Not supposed to be doing that. That's the wrong mouse. Okay. That's better. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. Okay. So we'll just pop the motherboard out. Set that right there. And then of course we will also remove the CPU from the box. The CPU has been used before, just in case you're wondering, that's why it's not totally sealed up. I rebox it though to give you guys a more authentic experience. It's just the that's just the level of, you know, detail that I try to stick with. Um, all right. Yeah, CPU is a 6600K for those of you guys who missed. And let's start out with that very crucial first part, installing the CPU, um, which is going to go in this socket right here. It has a socket cover on it and a little arm. You just pull the arm to the side and lift, and the so socket cover will lift up. Next, you have the CPU, like so. 
Uh, don't touch the gold contacts on the bottom of the CPU if you can avoid it. Um, that's that's what you don't want to touch. There's a couple notches on either side, right there towards uh, towards one edge, and then there's also a gold triangle on one corner. The gold triangle will line up with a triangle that's on the socket cover here, as well as painted onto the PCB right there. And you can also double check where those two notches are, uh, which in this case are towards the top of the motherboard right there. And you just grab the CPU by the sides and lower it gently into the sockets and it drops into place like so. Uh, I like to give it just a tiny little jiggle, just to, just very light, just to make sure it's settled in there, but don't push down on it or anything like that. Uh, then lower this little cover, make sure it catches under the little, little uh, hook, I don't know, screw part, whatever you call that right there. Engage the lever arm and the top cover should pop off. And there you go, CPU installed. That's all there is to it. Um, now we're gonna have to install well, the hard part, which is um, which is almost always in builds like this, going to be the CPU heatsink fan. Um, now, I, in an attempt to again make things go a little bit faster today, have already taken all this stuff out of the box, and we have a back plate. So normally, like a heatsink fan, you just you align it and put it up on top, and then you push in the four corners, and you're good. In this case, we have a back plate that goes on the back, so we're going to have to worry about that. Which goes like right there. And of course, there's instructions in the box for how to do all this properly and everything, but I'm going to mostly ignore those and go by what I, what I expect should work. Theoretically, in my head. Which is these four little posts. That's the other thing about these aftermarket heatsink fans um, that, that, you know, don't come with the CPU is they're all kind of different. So if you're not using this very specific Enermax one, there's a good chance that uh, any instructions I give you here will not really apply uh, completely. Anyway, I, I assume this must line up at some point. Oh, here we go. The instructions tell me which of these little holes in the back I'm supposed to align this with. But like I said, I'm ignoring that. Oh, there we go. No, that's probably wrong. I'm going to double check it. <laughs> anyway, how's everyone doing in chat? There are people from all over the world right now. There are 2,600 people watching. Thank you. Thanks for being here, you guys. I, uh, I hope you're all enjoying the holidays, whether it's Christmas or any other holiday you celebrate. Uh, you're all good people. All right, so I'm just double checking mainly. It's right here, this, this part, which you probably can't even see. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's three holes. One is for the LGA 1100 series, uh, and two of them are for older ones, uh, which include 1366 and 775, which are older Intel sockets. Uh, I just want... All right, I want the one that's closest, it looks like. Closest to that. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but trust me, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, that goes there. That goes there. Let me just screw it in. Get a little twisty there. Okay. That, this might, this might actually have worked. Okay. So basically I have four posts here that go on top. And I promise this is again the most boring and stupid part of, the, of, of any build. Aftermarket heatsink fans. If anything, this is a very good reason to invest in Intel's enthusiast platform. Uh, because it has a permanent back plate. Which makes things very nice for doing this type of thing. Because the back plate, you just don't have to worry about. You just install onto the back plate, and you don't have to worry about this extra one going on there. Um, anyway, I do have a train rolling by. You might, you guys might be able to hear. Again, nothing I can do about that. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to mention here, as I'm doing this build, is that it's the end of 2016 right now, like mid, almost late December. I guess you could call it late December. It's December 22nd. And this is my last build for this year, um, which is kind of cool. I've done lots of builds this year, been trying to do them every single month. And the nice thing is that um, it's given me the op opportunity to work with lots of different parts. And I've also, uh, for the most part, gone and like tested all the builds afterwards. So that's been cool too, to make sure that uh, you know they're working properly and give you guys an idea of what to expect performance-wise. But I would not necessarily recommend like buying this specific build right now, uh, mainly because 
there's a bunch of stuff supposed to come out at the beginning of 2017, which includes both new new Intel stuff and new AMD stuff. Uh, the AMD stuff is Zen, and I have uh, videos out on that if you haven't already seen them, uh, maybe to give you a better idea of what's going on with it. Uh, and then there's also KB Lake from Intel, which is the successor to this these Skylake processors. So KB Lake processors will be able to, to drop into Z170 boards like this, potentially with just a BIOS update. Uh, but Intel is also supposed to have Z270 motherboards, which are going to be successors to this. So the nice thing, again, about this build and the reason I parted it out, parted it out this way is you could build this right now, and then whenever KB Lake launches, we don't know exactly when it's going to happen, update your BIOS and then drop in a KB, a KB Lake processor if you wanted to or if you felt it was necessary. Um, if you're watching this in the future and KB Lake is already out, right now I'm using a 6600K, I'd recommend at least checking what a 7600K uh, will cost and what the performance is, of course, because you should know that by then since you live in the, you're in the future. Um, and that will give you a better idea of um, whether it's worth it to spend more on the KB Lake processor if they indeed end up costing more money, because that's also what we don't know right now is how much they're going to cost. Anyway, the cooler is going to go on top like that. It has these two little side pieces, right? Yeah, that go like, like that. And then a plate that goes across there. So just get those on with these four screws. Yeah, I, I was really not sure if I was going to be able to do this video today. I actually realized very late that like, oh yeah, it's it's the week of Christmas and I'm going away on Friday. Uh, we're going, you know, we're doing a family thing. So if I'm going to do this, I need to do it now. So I, I, I placed some fairly late orders. I needed the, the uh, motherboard and the graphics cards. So uh, thank God for Amazon Prime. I paid an extra $15 on top of Amazon Prime for one day shipping. And I was worried it wasn't gonna get here till uh, like 8 p.m., like that's as late as it, was, it could have arrived today. But thankfully it showed up much earlier than that. All right, that goes on top, cross plate goes across, and I will need thermal paste. Thermal paste is another uh, thing that can be scary for uh, first time PC builders. I will say that I completely understand that and that I should have thermal, oh there it is. Uh, but once you've done it a few times, you kind of get the hang of it. At the center of the CPU is where you want to put a little blob of thermal paste. Um, this is the stuff that came with. The, if I can get the uh, Taha. Thermal paste is probably toxic, so don't put it in your mouth like I just did. And uh, just get a little, little, little splurt, little splooge right there in the middle. That's all it takes. Don't overdo it. Don't worry if you overdo it, it's mainly that you're going to make a mess, but um, you really don't need much more than that. I usually describe it as something between the size of a grain of rice and a pea, maybe a little bit more towards the size of a pea, as far as the actual amount you want down there. Hiro has decided he's up. He's upset again, he's over there whimpering. Hiro, lie down, go lie down. I'm sorry, he, he went to the vet today, he was very good. Mostly, he was mostly very good. <laughs> Except when they tried to put a thermometer up his butt. Alright, um... I'm just gonna drop this straight on here like so. Make sure it's as centered as possible. And then normally you, you go opposite corners because you're screwing down four corners, but with this particular uh, CPU heatsink fan, it just has this crossbar, so... Just tighten both sides down kind of at the same time. You just don't want to disproportionately put pressure on one side before the other. And my head's blocking everything. What is, what's going on? All right. There we go. Okay, so that's tightened down. I just hand tightened it, but this does have a uh, screwdriver Phillips head. Uh, what do you what would you what do you what do you call that? What do you call not the Phillips head screwdriver end, but the, the a, a female Phillips head screw? I don't know. I'm sure you guys can figure that out in the comments. All right, so that's on there. It's on there pretty solid. It's so solid, in fact, that I can pick up the entire motherboard just by the the, the heatsink fan now and move it around. 
Although you don't want to like, you know, get violent with it or anything like that. Uh, the last thing I will need is a, to move that so I can get the fan. And this fan is not the fan that came with this heatsink fan. Um, it's a, it's a gentle typhoon, which is a, a very nice fan, very good for static pressure. And it's not quite as blingy and flashy as the one that this came with, which is kind of why I like it. Uh, anyway, some metal clips. Oop. I should do most both sides before I assume it's in place. Metal clips on the sides to hold the fan on. Ta-da. And there it is. All right. So, we've got our heatsink fan. CPU is going to stay nice and cool now. Next, we can go with memory. Um, you might notice, I don't know if you can see or not from where you're at, I don't have close-up cameras for this particular job, but this is actually overlapping one of the, one of the memory sockets. Uh, that might be potentially a good reason to get yourself low-profile memory, because memory with big stuff sticking off the top of it can be exciting, but um, something that's just simple and low-profile, like this stuff I'm using from Corsair, the Vengeance LPX, is uh, a little practical often. Um, fortunately, it's only blocking that closest dim slot, and this memory would fit under there. I would just need to take that fan off in order to put that in there. But usually you want to go with the uh, dim slots that are further out from the CPU. That's usually how they will be configured. Sometimes you can use either one, doesn't matter. But you do want to use matched slots, since it's dual channel memory. If you don't use the right matched slots, your memory will not operate in dual channel mode. So, um, and I, just because I know Asus motherboards, they always do the further slots and they always do every other one. Most motherboard manufacturers these do do every other one. So I'm putting it in the furthest out slot, I believe is slot number four and slot number two. Uh, and for memory, there's just a little notch in the middle. It's off center, so you can only put it in one way. Not that way, this way. And uh, you just kind of line it up and solid pressure straight down and theoretically, yes, the little clips will clip up and sort of hold that all into place. All right, so now our motherboard is prepped. We have uh, pretty much everything installed here and here's where, again, if I want to do an outside the box build, I would take the power supply, connect my 24 pin and my eight pin, uh, you know, maybe connect the monitor uh, and then you can either short the on off pins on the motherboard to turn on the system or sometimes the motherboard has an on-off switch built onto it. This one doesn't, again, that's because it's on the more budget side. Um, but then you can power stuff on and make sure it works. But I'm going to skip that. All right. Uh, I do want to plug in the CPU fan, at least now since it's out here and everything. And there's a three-pin fan header for that that says CPU fan on it, conveniently enough. So there's that. All right. I'm going to set this aside. And now we can move on to the case. The du, du case. Du case. I don't know what to call this case. It's it's the du the du case. It reminds me of Ramstein. Du case. Du case me. I can't sing Ramstein. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it properly. All right. I was kind of excited about this case though because $50 I think is a good solid budget amount of your budget to spend on a case but often the $50 case you have to cut some corners but this one seems like it's got uh, you know I'm sure it's not going to be the best built case ever or anything like that but it seems like it's got most of the features that you want uh, this is special case unboxing technique by the way you got to get all four flaps out flip it upside down Find the handles on the side, little little handle things, and pop those out. And then lift. Oh, I'm going to hit my mic. Hold on. There we go. Now prepare yourself as you're about to get a static shock. Always happens. Use the elbow. That's also a pro tip. Um, okay. Bottom is on this side. Let's 
solid core styrofoam. That means it'll break up into little pieces and get everywhere. And there we go. It is a computer case. It's all black. It has a side panel window. It has one USB 3 and one USB 2. At least it's not just one USB 3. It's got mic and headphone, you know, power reset button up there. It's even got a little fan controller, three position fan controller up here. Uh, the front opens, little door, you know, very standard. It's all plastic, but you know, it doesn't look too bad. Um, and then it does have five and a quarter inch bays, which, you know, some people can do without. I don't mind them. I feel like this top piece should move or something as well. I don't know. That's weird. Again, I've never worked with this case before, so I'll be learning about it as I go, perhaps as you will too. All right, so for case prep, I'm going to get my uh, screws out here. Oh. Don't forget your handy metallic screw tray. Metallic. <laughs> Magnetic screw tray. And uh, there's a side panel. I recommend leaving this plasticky covering of the plexi on there as long as possible. Because that will be getting scratched. No matter what you do. No matter what you say. Your plexigra plexiglass side panel will end up with scratches in it. All right, um, yeah, so there we go. Cover, uh, shroud area here for the for the power supply. Also nice if you're using a um, not as nice power supply that looks ugly, it's covered by that. Uh, a couple of SSD trays up here so you can show those off to your friends. And um, yeah, you know, probably not the, the highest quality fans in here or anything like that, but what do you want? Uh, the other thing I'm thinking up here on the front is that it probably oh oh god there we go yeah it only comes with one fan Ta-da! so um that's something you would probably want to add an intake fan up here it looks like you can handle uh a 120 or a 140 actually two 120s or a single 140 um, so I'm actually going to grab one of those right now. Maybe. <clears throat> Here, I'll use a fractal can, a fractal fan. That way Josh will get mad if he's watching. Um, where'd my scissors go? Drop the fan. It's, it's still okay, don't worry. Also, Hero's upset. All right, the other thing the cases often come with is a box or pack of screws and stuff. It's not uncommon. Can't forget my magnetic tray. Okay, I think it's all in this plastic baggie here. Aha! Okay. So, uh, basically I'm just trying to figure out if I have the right screws to mount this uh, fan up there. If not, I'm going to have to dig into my fan, or my screw kit. Oh, thank God it did. All right. These are uh, longer screws. They're meant to mount a fan. Go through there. Go through there again. All right, what's going on? Hey, a dollar from Coffee Black 9182. Uh, I did not leave the sticker on the bottom of the heatsink, but thank you for warning me. Uh, I might have if that was a brand new heatsink that had never been used before, but um, it has been used, and that sticker has been removed. 
But people do that. Even people who have built, been building computers for a long time do that. Uh, so always double check if you've got a plastic bit on the bottom of your uh, bottom of your heatsink fan for your your CPU before you install it. Alrighty. Oh, you know what I've you know what I haven't busted out yet? Ah, oh, yes. Electric screwdriver. I just need to get one on here. Yay, all right. That should line up the rest of them. How's everything going in chat? I don't know, I don't know what the hell's going on in chat. Everything's going by way too fast. So I, I guess I should admit that um, since I have not, I don't think I included the cost of, a, of a, another fan in the cost of the build. So yeah, fans cost, I don't know, 10 to $25, depending on whether or not they're Noctua. And uh, make sure you have enough of them. Typically for fan uh, placement and airflow, you have... An intake fan, which is how I've just set that one up, at the bottom front of the case that brings air in, and then the air flows up, and then you'll have an exhaust either at the back or up at the top, and then usually, at least in cases like this, power supply is down at the bottom, and that has its own airflow, pulls in air through the bottom and pushes it out through the back. Uh, this case does have something in the way of a, of a dust filter. It's really not the nicest one, but it is there, so you can pop that off and clean it after you've been using your system for a few months or a year. Pops back on super easily, as you can probably tell. All right, there we go. It uh, doesn't look like there's really much ventilation. Oh, there is. This, oh, sorry, sorry, rip headphone users. Uh, this one does have a little bit of uh, dust filtration right there at the front too. Although it doesn't look like it's removable, you just have to remove this entire thing, which, you know, you saw me do it. You just have to grasp by the bottom and give it a firm tug and it pops off. Oh, where do they, where do they want these fan plugs to be routed? All right, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna put the front back on. Then we can start putting the rest of the good pieces in here. This goes back on the same way it came off, with a little bit more effort than you feel like is safe. And there we go. Sometimes you gotta manhandle it a little bit. Alright, so... What else do we have here? Ah, the fan controller. That's interesting. Fan controller has a Molex plug. And then, oh, that's... Alright. Okay, well... <laughs> the exhaust... Th these are interesting fan configurations. Usually a fan will either have a 3-pin uh, plug that you can plug straight into a motherboard, or sometimes it'll have like a little adapter that comes with it that allows you to plug it into what is colloquially known as a Molex plug, which is uh, this little guy here. These have been around a while. Old, older uh, hard drives and stuff use these kinds of plugs. Molex is actually like a corporation, and they make a variety of plugs. But since that's the most common one made and used in computers, it is the one that you hear about the most often. Anyway, I'm trying to route my cables back Kind of where they should be, just just to get things a little bit out of the way, so I have room for the uh, motherboard to go in. And before the motherboard goes in, of course, can't forget that I/O shield. Budget I/O shield for a budget motherboard. Let's see if I can actually show this a little bit better. There it is. Focus. 
There we go. IO shield, you just line up from the inside like this. And uh, this one's all metal, so like could easily cut me, but you just kind of kind of pop it into place from inside. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt. If it is, I recommend the butt end of a screwdriver. Just push on that from the inside, and it should pop into place. All right. For itself, I'm gonna move this light so there's more light. I have no idea if that worked or not. Could also bump up the ISO. Maybe that will help. Okay. Sweet. All right, uh, I'm just gonna drop in the motherboard now. Uh, the main thing you need to worry about before dropping the motherboard in is of course that IO shield that we already installed, but also, very important uh, motherboard standoffs. Now, this case has them pre-installed and you maybe are able to see them. There's one here in the center. There's nine total, three in the top row, three in this center row, and three across the bottom. Um, this motherboard <clears throat> is actually a, a shorty motherboard. It's not as wide as a typical ATX board is, which means that uh, you don't have that third set of screws here. So there's only gonna be a total of six uh, screws keeping this motherboard in place, as opposed to the nine that you'd usually have, but that's fine. Uh, just make sure that those standoffs are all in place before you install it, and then it's also a good idea to double check uh, the screws that they have provided for you, because uh, you wanna make sure that those will screw into those standoffs properly uh, without getting stuck and then set aside as many of those screws as you will need to install the motherboard. All right, and it looks like they're using the, the fine thread, so we'll keep that in mind. Okay, uh, motherboard installation, you just wanna keep an eye on that IO, guide that down into place with the IO shield that was just installed. And like it's so. Oh, it's almost lined up. Come on now. There we go. <clears throat> and then if you get a little bit of a push from the right side of the board, you can kind of line up those standoff screws and then we will install those one at a time. Uh, standoff screws you should be somewhat careful with. Uh, just make sure that they're snug. Do not over tighten them. Over tightening motherboard standoff screws is bad. And uh, also, uh, wait, what was the last thing? There was something else. I forgot. Uh, just, yeah, just do them one at a time. Oh, I was going to say, don't don't use the mechanical uh, screwdriver for this one. Best just to do this by hand. Take some time. All that good stuff. All right. This is the part that I usually speed through when I'm doing a video about this. But I don't have that luxury right now. It's okay. If you're watching this in the future, you can just, you know, fast forward. Oh, look, chat spammers. Sweet. I did not leave the plastic sticker. Wait, I might have left the plastic on the... I, I, I might have left the plastic on, on the, the side panel. I didn't read that whole comment before it scrolled by. All right, uh, so six of those are installed and that's pretty good. I am going to tuck this extra bit of cable from the CPU fan behind the motherboard. Again, just to kind of get it out of the way. Cable management. The earlier you start thinking about cable management, the easier the cable management will be. Sweet. All right. Um, Let's ju let's do front panel connectors just because I got them right here and they're ready to go and, and I hate them So let's take care of it and get it out of the way front panel connectors uh, typically include I don't want that right now 
Uh, this little group right here, which is a uh, front panel for power switch, reset switch, and hard drive, and power LEDs. Um, these are labeled. The switches uh, don't really matter which uh, header you plug. I mean, they matter which header you plug it into, but uh, positive and negative doesn't matter. The LEDs do matter, positive and negative. But if you do happen to get them wrong, all that will go wrong is that the LEDs on the case won't light up properly, in which case you go and switch them back. Um, and this is one particular situation where you definitely want to double check the motherboard manual because uh, it's just, this is just the worst part of building a computer, honestly, and everyone hates it, and everyone complains about it, and yet nothing changes. I don't understand. They've made some various attempts at uh, normalizing this in the past. AAFP, oh wait, no, that's audio. What am I talking about? Uh, they've tried to normalize this in the past, but really I guess they just can't decide on anything between all the ma manufacturers out there. Uh, system panel connector is what they're calling it in this motherboard menu uh, guide. And there's listed hard drive LED, power LED, power button and ground, reset button and ground. Awesome. They're the very lower rightmost set of headers. And I'm going to attempt to not curse very much as I plug them in. Uh, Stephen Hill, thank you so much for your, for your donation, sir. Uh, any recommendations on capture cards for less than 4K resolution? Um, I will say that my Razer Ripsaw has been doing a fine job. That's, that's being used right now. Um, right now I'm using the Razer Ripsaw for one camera and the Blackmagic uh, Intensity Pro for the other. Blackmagic has also been pretty stable for me. Um, there is an Intensity Pro 4K that you can get. I just got the new Blackmagic card uh, that I did a video on uh, before I went on my vacation and that I haven't touched since I got back, so I haven't made too much progress on that. Hold on. Power LED, the plus is on the left. I hate, I hate everything. Oh, no, that's not LED. Okay. Life is pain. Make sure that went in okay. One more. No, three more. Ah, oh, it's agony. It's pure agony. Power power button is on top. You guys probably get a nice look at the back of my head while I do this. Reset switch. Last one. Yay! All right. Well, hey, here's a here's a positive uh, for the d Ducas uh, that we're working in here. These cables for the front panels are not a hideous uh, bunch of different colors. They're just kind of gray and black. That's nice. Um, HD audio. Honestly, I skip HD audio a lot of the time. This is the plug that you need to plug in in order to so that your front panel mic and headphone jacks will work. The audio quality from HD audio connections is usually not as good um, and can often lead to interference and stuff like that. So I typically don't use it and I mainly only plug it in because it's like a, you know, it's irritating if you don't. Like there's a plug thing that's not plugged in and then, then what are you going to do? All right. Here's a couple front panels. Uh, there's now a couple USBs. USBs. Uh, so there's this one, which is USB 2.0. I think you guys can see that. Small little brick of uh, what would be 10 pins, except one of them is blocked out. Uh, and then there's this USB, which is USB 3.0. Uh, and another nice thing for this Ducas uh, case is they did a little uh, extension off of here. So if your motherboard doesn't have USB 3.0, you can just plug in the USB 2.0 if it's got that. And the plug up there will still work. Uh, you just, you got to plug this one in if you need USB 3.0. This motherboard does have USB 3.0, of course, so plugs in right here. These plugs are large and kind of unwieldy, but there it is. And this motherboard has several USB 2.0 headers down here, so that's plugged in now too. Sweet. The sticker's gone. The sticker's gone, guys. Okay. Sweet. So there we go. Uh, front panels are done. I'm actually really happy about that. Next, we need to install our power supply, which is right over here. Wonderful. Quite wonderful. 
All right, uh, power supply, again, I usually like to put the fan down because that's usually where the power supply will have a dedicated fan filter. And in fact, in fact, I think there's a sticker on the case here telling you to put the fan side down. Yeah, because if you put the fan up on this case, it would be completely blocked by that shroud. So, extra instructions. doesn't want to go in. Oh, this is, this could be interesting. Ha <laughs> ha, okay. That is awkward. All right, so there's like this ridge going along here in the bottom of the case that the side panel goes into. And it blocks you, it ends right here. <laughs> so, I had to, I had to really kind of do a funny angle on this uh, power supply in order to get it to go in there properly. But there it is. Sweet. And now we screw it in from the back. It's always the first screw. Getting the first screw in is the hardest part. Everything else after that, everything else after that should line itself up. Or not. I spoke too soon. Close enough. I don't know what it is here. This one, this one screw at the back just didn't want to go in straight, so. There, fixed it. All right, so power supply is installed. Uh, I didn't mention this uh, when I should have, but um, the modular cables you're plugging in for the power supply are the ones that you will need to plug into the rest of the system, which includes a 24 pin for the motherboard, uh, an extra eight pin for the CPU, which is right there. Uh, we also have, uh, in this case, two PCI Express graphics connectors, which are either gonna be six pin or like these are six plus two. Uh, and then uh, this little lead coming out for SATA, which gives us three SATA plugs uh, to connect the drives to. All right. I need a drink. How's everything going in chat? Uh, if you're wondering why it's an R9 uh, Fury instead of like a 1070, the answer is $100. Because this is a $1,000 build. And if you want a 6600K, oh, that's awkward. If you want a 6600K, and a 1070, um, it's really hard to do a full build with all the parts you need and get it in under $1,000. So yeah, uh, this Sapphire one was uh, 270 or $280, I believe. Is Kyle here? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, what's next? I've lost track of what I'm doing. Uh, why don't I install drives? Actually, no. I installed the power supply, why don't I plug in some of the power connectors? So good cases, we'll have at least some amount of space back here behind the motherboard tray to route power cables and whatnot. This case has that, fortunately. At the same time, I'm pulling all of my cables uh, that I plugged in up front here, at least the excess, I'm just kind of pulling it back so um, I know how much extra cable I'm gonna have just, just hanging off of there. Oh, that's unfortunate. 
the USB 3, the extra little guy hanging off of there for the USB 2 is, well, unsightly, shall we say. All right. So I'm going to need to figure out at some point like how all these are going to just be held back here. I'm probably just going to end up wedging them back here when I put this, the case side panel back on. Um, again, this is a, a case that's more on the budget side, so you don't have any grommets here, but you do have decent pass-throughs, and they are rolled. Uh, they rolled the steel over here so that they're not sharp on the edges. That is also a nice touch. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to pass through the 24 pin for the uh, main motherboard power. CPU power usually goes up here somewhere, and there's, oh my gosh, there's barely, oh wait, that's not CPU, that's, that's graphics. Don't get those confused. It's easy to do. All right, there we go. CPU, which whew, barely has enough room up there in the corner to get through. Yeah, just enough. And cool. With those two kind of ratted, I'm just going to stuff the rest of these back under here for the time being. So I can plug those in. Sweet. All right, so I don't know where to go. You guys probably aren't going to be able to see this very well up in the corner. Well, you kind of can, I guess. But uh, oh, this isn't too bad. This plug can also be kind of a pain in the butt to plug in. So, uh, careful of that, I guess. <laughs> Trying to give good advice and other than just like, hey, watch out for that. Um, yeah, so this might be something that you can do, uh, route the cable up as you're installing the motherboard. Sometimes I've done that before. Fortunately, there is a good amount of space up in the top of this case. So I am able to get my hand up in there. Theoretically, at least. Oh, the catch is on the other side. I was doing it wrong. Head it backwards. We'll just do them one at a time. All right. Cool. That's in there. And then this uh, big old 24 pin. Right in here. This is the downside to these motherboards that are smaller is there's no support along this edge, so I'm using my uh, spare hands to just hold the underneath side of that mother of the motherboard tray, or just the motherboard PCB, while I plug that 24 pin plug in because uh, that can take some force sometimes, and you don't want to put too much pressure on the motherboard PCB where you don't have any means of uh, supporting it from underneath. All right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyway, I, I hid the <laughs> I hid that extra USB dongle down there, so that's useful. Uh, and then other than that, just trying to get everything moved here so that there's enough room. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna need to uh, plug those fans in, uh, get the drives, and then uh, the graphics card, and then that should be should be all we need to do. While I'm over here, let's get these serial ATA cables going. Uh, again, I got two of these, and one of them is gonna go right here. Because I'm going to put one of the SSDs in one of these trays, and then the 3.5 inch. Uh, there's a tray for the, or a, yeah, a drive cage for the 3.5 inch drives over there. Um, so let's do that. SATA plugs are L-shaped, uh, so they have a little angled, angled part on one side, so they can only go in one way. And there's a little metal catch on most of them that will kind of snap into place. So there we go. Most of the time you don't have to worry about which SATA plugs you plug the SATA devices into, um, but sometimes if you have a nicer motherboard there's extra controllers and that kind of thing, so you would want to double check the motherboard manual to make sure that uh, you're plugging them into the appropriate ones. The SATA ports that are natively controlled, that are directly controlled by the chipset, are almost, they're pretty much always the fastest. All right, routed those back there too. 
Uh, thank you. Oh, wait, I shouldn't do that. Thank you, Zipzeolock. Do you know of a service that installs PC hardware for someone is disabled and unable to do it themselves without having to afford expensive pre-built systems? Uh, I, I do not. I'm sorry. At least not off the top of my head. Buying a pre-built system would probably be the, the best thing for something like that. And there's lots of pre-built system manufacturers. Uh, there's boutique builders that are more specialty that cost more. Um, kind of get what you pay for in those instances, though, because, you know... Uh, I don't know, the only one that pops into my head right now is like Puget Systems, uh, uh, like Origin, uh, there's other ones like that. Um, those will charge you a premium on top of the price of the components, of course, because they're, they're setting everything up for you. But they will also often back things up with like a warranty and technical support and that kind of thing. So that would be what I'd recommend you do. Because uh, even, even the nicer, uh, nicer PC building companies We'll still build, you know, more budget level PCs that, that don't cost quite as much. Okay, let's get the hard drive installed. Metal tray! Even has a little bit of rubber uh, grommets that the hard drive installs with, but I like a metal tray. And there's one more over here for the SSD. They have deep, cool logos on them, and I'll just start installing these. Maybe I can like vaguely pay attention to chat for a moment too. Hey, yes, it's a that's the CM Storm mousepad. CM Storm doesn't even exist anymore. CM Storm was Cooler Masters. I don't think there's CM Storm anymore. I don't think they brand anything CM Storm. Uh, CM Storm is Cooler Master's like gaming brand because you know Cooler Master in and of itself apparently wasn't as much enough of a gaming brand, so they made CM Storm. I never really understood it. I don't understand why companies decide to make sub brands sometimes. I understand why they do it, why they do it sometimes when they try to keep it a secret because they're trying to make something that is you know appealing to a different demographic or something like that that they don't want to their existing like intellectual property and branding to affect. But yeah, I never understood, like CM Storm, I never understood why they did that. Uh, all right. Oh my God, Joshua Gray. Is that really Joshua Gray or is that a different Joshua Gray? If it's Joshua Gray who I've met before, hey, how's it going, man? Uh, plus minus on power button headers sometimes matters. My old Corsair 250D would shut off whenever you touch the front panel because of ESD, finding its way through the aluminum panel, reversing the pins fix fixed it. That is uh, good advice, Joshua. And I have not heard of that happening before. I have heard of poorly wired front panel connectors. Actually, I've had a case that did that before as well, uh, causing random shutoffs and stuff like that. But uh, that's good advice. And especially if you're ever dealing with like a troubleshooting situation where you don't know what's wrong, having suggestions like that that you've heard people uh, have had to deal with before, just kind of in the back of your mind, like, oh yeah, that, that could be causing it. Um, that's always, it's always good to have. And thank you again for the donation. All right. I'm doing the complete wrong view right there. All right. Just getting the SSD installed up front here. Oh, you know what I should do? I should actually wrap the power to it and the data cable. That would be useful. Where can I do that? Aha, right here. So there's a data plug. Oh, that's going to be the real question. It's always the trick with modular power supplies is can you get away with having as few cables connected to it as possible? And always it comes down to the SATA drives with that. So I have a SATA uh, plug coming off of this power supply with three SATA connectors on it. Uh, if I If I want to use that same plug for both this SSD up here and the hard drive down there, I need to move the SSD over a notch, which perhaps won't be as aesthetically pleasing, but will keep me from having to run over and find out where all the modular cables for this power supply are because I don't immediately know. Anyway, I got those routed there and this should work.
Ta-da. Okay. Power and data. And SSD is installed. I love thumb screws. Maybe that's why it's my logo. Uh, okay. On the other side, there is a small, if you guys couldn't see before, because I don't think I had the camera switched. Uh, there's a little cage down here uh, just for two hard drives. So, and again, little metal trays, so that's cool. Uh, hard drives have mount points, mounting points on the side, but also uh, four on the bottom, and that's what these trays use. And it will go this way. No, this way. Oh. Oh, goodness. It, it kind of grips. Kind of grips around the side a little bit. Uh, right. Where are the holes? Oh, that's weird. Okay, holes are lined up, and screws. What's going on, chat? Uh, the four the GTX 480. I can. I have a 480. Can I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's right there, right up on the shelf. There's another train. They are the bane of my existence. Trains. Ah. So yeah, uh, I've I've been liking this case so far. Again, for the money, you can definitely see certain areas where, like, okay, here's where you get something nicer with a more expensive case. But um, the areas where they've cut corners, I feel like are acceptable places. And um, it, I mean, overall, I think it's looking pretty nice. Honestly, the the worst thing I, aesthetically for me is this blue USB 3.0 cable. Um, that would be much nicer, all black. Although I imagine you could mod that and paint it or something like that if you really wanted to. Um, hard drive goes in like so. Again, held in with thumb screws. I, it's just, that's great. All right, cool. And look, I have just enough room on my SATA cable to plug that power in. Maybe. Yes, okay, cool. Well, that extra plug is a little <laughs> on the awkward side, but it's okay. Uh, all right, so got the SATA plug plugged in there as well. So that's good to go. And things are moving along. Cool. I'm still live streaming, which is super useful. And hey, we broke 3,000 viewers. I haven't been watching the viewer account very much, but thanks to all you guys who are watching. That's crazy. If I actually imagined that there were 3,000 people sitting in front of this, like, staring at me right now, it would make me really self-conscious. I'm not going to think about that, though. Uh, all right, so what I would like to do now, because what I've decided here is that I'm not going to use this uh, fan controller. That's the nice thing about having a fan controller built into the case is you can be like, I'm not even going to use that. Uh, you can control fans in a few different ways if you plug them into this fan controller. Uh, it will accept three or four pin fan plugs. Uh, and then you'd have a switch on the top so you could do low, medium, high. Um, if you have fans with three pin plugs on them, which most of them do uh, come with, you can plug that directly into the motherboard and then you can use the motherboard, either the BIOS or the, or software to control the fan speed. Uh, so I'm gonna opt for that in this situation. And again, there's like, there's pros and cons to both of them. There's lots of times where I'm just like, you know what, I don't, I don't want to deal with the motherboard stuff. Just plug into that fan controller and flip a switch if I want things to be quieter or not. I do need fan headers though. Oh god, where are the fan headers? Hold on. Come on, Asus. Asus is usually really good at this. I can't see any. <laughs> oh, there's one. Right at the top. Is there really none down here? Speaker. Clear CMOS. Wow.
Well, there are like four fan headers on this motherboard, but they're just not in the best location. There's none in the, this lower corner of the board. So I hope I have enough length on this cable. I think I'll be okay. Let's, let's give me, I'll reroute it here so I have as much room to work with as possible. Ah, there's enough. Okay. So you guys can't see very well, but there's a chassis fan header right here up at the top. Go into that one. Ta-da. And then lastly is this fan that came with the board, which does have an extra, again, this Molex lead coming off of it, which I, I don't really like. I mean, it's not going to look good, but just going to have to deal with it for now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's in a bad, that's in a bad spot. So the other two fan headers are right here, which is just, there's no good way to like plug something in there and not have it look like a random straggly cable going across, going across your build. So that might've been a good excuse to use the fan controller, but in this case, I don't have a Molex, Molex plug to plug in that fan controller, so we'll, we'll shortcut it here. All right. What can I do with this Molex plug? Just wedge it back in there. Sure, sure, that works. <laughs> I'm trying to maintain cable management standards. It's not working. All right. That is a terrible straggler and I want to do more about it, but I'm afraid, I'm afraid right now I'm gonna have to, have to leave that as is. Point is that the fans are plugged in. Praise Jesus. All right. Uh, now we can do the graphics card, which I have not even taken out of the box yet. Let's do that. This is brand new Sapphire Nitro series uh, R9 Fury. Where's my? Let's use the knife. Haha. -ha. Yes, the R9 Fury. It's so exciting when AMD launched it. It was the first graphics card to use high bandwidth memory, HBM. Uh, Performance-wise, it has its strengths and its weaknesses. It is still 4 gigs of memory, which is on the low side, but it is extremely fast and it has a lot of bandwidth. 4,096-bit uh, memory bandwidth. So. And this card is quite large. So uh, it's overclocked has that piece of plastic on it. Comes with an HDMI cable. I'm not sure why. Yeah. I'm going to clean up all of this stuff later. <laughs> That's the other nice thing about building a computer. You make a big mess. All right, I will peel the plastic off though. Part of the whole buying a new graphics card thing. Where, why won't that come off? Ever since my old EVGA uh, GTX 260, <clears throat> which I had, I used it and I played a lot of World, World of Warcraft with it for like a couple years, I think. And then I took it out of the, syst out of the system to, um, I think to clean it. I was like cleaning the whole system and everything. I looked at it close and I was like, hold on. When I started peeling, I realized that a bunch of little plastic pieces, you know, the protective plastic that they put over all these things was still on there. And often, like uh, these, especially these little pieces, it's like, how, how would you even know that was there? Oh, it's so satisfying though. I finally get it. So all these little, wow, there's a ton of them on here. It's gonna like double the, 
the time that this live stream takes to finish to get all these off. Can't stop though once you start. I can't only do a few of them. That would be wrong. Oh, there's another piece down here. Come on. Let's give you guys a let's give you guys a better look at this. I can share in my Ah. Are there any channels that are just dedicated to this, like slow-mo peeling off of the plastic pieces? Because if there isn't, there really should be. There's definitely an opening on YouTube for that kind of thing. All right. I think that's all of them. Those four and this one, is they, did they put them on here? I don't think the fans have them on there. All right, so I think we're all right. Anyway, uh, it has a pretty nice back plate on it. Extended... Uh, cooler and they've actually left that open like a gap so the air can flow through it which is probably a little helpful for cooling since there is an active fan right there um, and yeah there it is GPU so in order to install our GPU we simply need to remove uh, the two PCI Express or PCI expansion technically they're just expansion slots the two expansion slot uh, bracket covers right here Oh, those are pretty flimsy. And then graphics card goes in like this. It's those little plastic pieces, which may or may not cause any difficulty. Or just this big old USB 3.0 cable. There we go. Not centered. Alright, so it drops down into the slot. Uh, there's a little latch down there that kind of pops up and uh, catches it in place. And then again, two power uh, plugs for this right there, but first I will replace the thumb screws on this side to hold everything secure. Bada bing. Cool. And then thankfully I, uh, due to foresight, already routed these uh, PCI Express graphics cables over here. Gonna line up the uh, six and the two. And again, make sure that catch is on the right side. There's one. And here is number two. I oh, know it didn't go in right. The six pin went in before the two pin. All right, that's better. Sweet. <clears throat> so there we go. All the hardware is pretty much installed. Uh, thank you, TV Chow, for your dollar donation and for for penis for saying penis. Yes, I can see it, and I saw your penis. Uh, all right. Uh, other than that, is just cable management stuff. That's really all that's left. And since I'm live streaming, I'm really again not going to pay too much attention to to all that. Wait, wait, wrong one, that one. Cause look, from this side, it looks pretty nice, right? Pretty clean. Uh, flip side. Looks like that, which is not so clean. But look, this case side panel has this nice part there that's kind of popped out. And uh, that is to, again, allow for space for all of these loose and unruly cables. So if you really want to know, yes, if I was building this system for long term use or whatever, or to give to someone, yes, I would be working on this and cinching them up and using some zip ties or some uh, some Velcro or anything like that to get them kind of where it should be. But in this situation, I'm just gonna put the side panel back on. Here's a, here's a trick for that. Put the case on this side, then you can get all four hands on it, pop it into place.
Ta-da. All right. Almost lost my electric screwdriver. So that is not too bad. Even with the minimal cable management, it's really this 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 fan cable up in the top that's bothering me the most. Other than that, not too bad at all, though. Uh, all right, so another rule of uh, PC building or superstition, if you will. Oh, I think I figured out how to get this off. Ta-da! Um, in case anyone's anyone's wondering, that piece. Uh, pr provides you uh, access to up top, where it looks like you could easily do a 240 millimeter radiator, possibly even a 280. There's a decent amount of space up there. And uh, a lot of space above the motherboard and in between the top of the motherboard and the top of the case, so cool. I like this case for the price and everything. I mean, the fact that you could, that you could like upgrade it to a liquid cooling setup or like a CLC and not even have to worry about Doing a different case, that's not bad. Good job, Deep Cool. All right. Uh, anyway, back to the superstition thing, though. Uh, you should not uh, put the other side panel on until you've at least done a test boot. So let's see how good I was at doing this. Power switch is on. All right. And the system has booted, hooray! Wonderful. Uh, am I gonna overclock it? No, I'm not overclocking it. I'm not installing Windows. This has been a purely build the computer live stream. So um, sorry, sorry for that, but it works. Look, it even got nice and quiet after a second. Yeah, yeah, not bad at all. All right, so uh, there it is. Let's do the final honors with this other side panel. Here that is. Ooh. Peeling of the plastic. Sweet. And ta-da. Awesome. There it is. All right. Uh, Ocean Man, thank you for your 10 GBP uh, from all the way from the UK. Your 10 GBP donation. Hey, Paul, first of all, love your vids. Watch regularly. You're the reason I got a Predator X34. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for hurting your pocketbook in that way. And an MSI 1080X. They're, those are very good products. Expensive, but very good products. I have an i7-6700, but my PC crashes sometimes. It makes a buzzing noise. It's rare, but annoying. Do you know why? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Crashes and makes a buzzing noise. I would point towards your power supply, perhaps, especially if it's sporadic. Um, if your power supply is giving good power most of the time, but then your power supply has trouble dealing with like some nasty ripple coming from the wall or something like that, uh, then that could possibly be an issue. Um, beyond that, I mean, you can always do the old method of like reseeding stuff. Um, typically, if something's not seated properly, it just isn't going to work in the first place. But um, that's that's where I would point to in that situation. Watch for shorts too, potentially shorts in the case somewhere, because um, having having a couple wires crossed up can lead to that sort of thing. All right. Well then, guys, this has been my one thousand dollar live build, my build for December. Um, I'm not going to be promising to benchmark this build, although I might benchmark it in the future, perhaps against some future hardware that I can't talk about yet. We'll leave it at that. Uh, if you're wondering what you should do next, because in lots of builds you get to this point and like it boots, it starts up, the fans spin, everything's good. I would definitely recommend that you check out my first five things to do after building a new PC uh, video. I think that's what it's called. First five things to do after with the new PC build. Uh, it's in my be beginners uh, uh, how to build a PC playlist. Uh, and that will kind of walk you through what to do now as far as getting Windows set up on like a USB drive and installed. And even the second part of it that tells you how to like set up Steam games and all that kind of thing. 
Anyway, though, guys, uh, I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas, if that is what you celebrate. If you don't, I hope you just have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of the year. Happy 2016 to all of you. I hope 2017 is a wonderful year, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and, of course, hit the thumbs up button and leave comments in the comment section if you enjoyed this video and if you have anything to say to me. Anyway, I'm going to get ready for a road trip, and I hope you guys have a good day. See you later. I need to go do the thing over here.